Welcome to Caribbean Medical TV, the television series that aims to create a better and informed tomorrow on all things health and wellness. Together, we've been on a journey, showcasing the vibrant tapestry of our culture and citizenry that defines the Caribbean. We are singularly unique, and yet a perfect mapping to the vast diversity of the global stage. Everyday international effort finds its way to our shores, none more evident than during Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. Right here in the Caribbean, the John E. Sabga Foundation has joined the global health campaign dedicated to advocating for greater research and clinical trials, which one day will hopefully be the gateway to finding a cure. We are more than a statistic. Every number is an individual that represents a greater community. Every person who has succumbed to cancer has a name, and every cause has its origin point. Today, we start with the name of John. Six years ago, my father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and after a grueling nine-month battle succumbed to the disease. Two, maybe three weeks after his 56th birthday. You know, I'll say when you get a diagnosis like that, you never think that's going to be your outcome. For some reason, your mind always lets you go to the place that you're going to fight it, you're going to win, you're going to be a miracle, you'll be a survivor. I've done years of therapy and I still don't think my therapist and I have talked about the reality of a diagnosis like that coming in. How it changes you, how it affects you, how it overcomes more than just your mind, it affects your body, your soul, everything in a way. I didn't see it as a quote unquote death sentence until it was probably too late for me to process it in the moment. You know, I let my mind take me to those places we can fight. He, it won't be him, you know, he'll be a survivor. But it's so important to know when to fight and when to rest. And it seems like giving up, but it's not. It's, you know, letting that person rest. And ultimately, he was the one who decided when it was time to rest. Because at the end of the day, cancer doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care how old you are, color your skin is, what church you go to, what God you pray to comes in all shapes and sizes, all forms, all aggressions. It's just a luck of the draw. Pancreas is like an organ I didn't even know existed, really. I mean, you know it exists, but you don't really know how vital it is to your existence, to your body. We don't really hear about it, and pancreatic cancer is such a slow and silent creeper that I think, you know, we hear the doctors talking about early detection, and early detection is key, and, you know, I do think early detection is key because most of the time you can't even see the pancreas on a normal CT scan, MRI, any of the basic scans that you would go to the doctor to do. As I think about the future, I think it's becoming increasingly important that we think about global health, right? And pancreas cancer is a global issue. And although much research is being done in the United States, various parts of Europe, China, we have to do better in terms of doing clinical trials and clinical research in other affected parts of the world. And I think that it's an important problem for patients in the Caribbean. And, you know, I hope with the efforts of what the Sapka Foundation is doing and others, bringing awareness to the plight of patients with cancer, not, gen not only pancreas cancer, but with cancer in general, that in the future, we will be in a better position to conduct clinical trials in the Caribbean with the appropriate support and the appropriate uh, research infrastructure to do those trials, right? I mean, the problem is that they're complex and they do require a lot of research infrastructure. That being said, I think where there's a will, there's a way. My career is about affecting change. I wanna really be able to provide hope for patients with this disease and provide hope for patients who look like me. We have a lot of grit in the pancreatic cancer world and we hate this cancer with a passion. When I went into this 
this field 20 years ago, I purposefully picked the field that I thought needed the most help and needed the most work. And our work is not even close to being done. We have so much more to do. We have both feet on the gas and, uh, and we're not going to take them off until we've, we find a cure for this disease. And I think about pancreas cancer uh, seven days a week. I mean, that's, that's basically why I think why I'm on planet Earth is to try to make a difference with this disease. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask other people and add second opinion. Well, in my case, uh, I had lived in Trinidad for many years and I knew Natalie Sabga and I knew John Sabga as well and I knew the story about John. So when I heard about my diagnostic, I mean, I thought about John right away and contacting Natalie to sort of find out who did she see, who did she consult, what did she hear. Pancreatic cancer is probably the diagnosis that you as a physician would like to avoid having to announce to a patient. So you can imagine when it was announced to me, I was pretty much aware of all the aura, all the negative aura around that. So hearing this diagnosis for me was a big shock. It was quite a trauma. The advice I would give to anybody receiving a cancer diagnosis would be ask questions, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask, don't be afraid to look for information and do not listen only to one source of information because there is a lot of advances. Not everybody is aware of that and you have to remain hopeful. This is gonna be your salvation. Actually, it's not a death sentence at all. Uh, if it's caught earlier, there's absolutely no question that it can be cured. But it is a serious cancer, and if it's caught later, uh, then it is more difficult. But there are now 5, 10, 15 year survivors, even with stage 4 pancreatic cancer. So if someone tells you, just uh, get your affairs in order and uh, don't do anything, that's a mistake. Because you have to be alive to get the next breakthrough. I talk to a lot of physicians from um, uh, Trinidad who treat patients with pancreatic cancer. There's not a lot of funding and infrastructure to do research in, in, uh, in Trinidad and other Caribbean countries. But what I would say is that the, the situation is improving and foundations like the John Savga Foundation are doing a lot to try to get at least the standard of care for patients outside of a trial improved. If somebody we think could benefit from some innovative treatment, I try to help facilitate that at least as much as I can. You know, sort of outside of a study, we call it compassionate use. I try to help as much as I can in, in that regard. But really, um, you know, the, the infrastructure right now needs a little more work and a little more funding to be able to conduct um, research here. Thank you, Dr. Hossein, for your insights. And now, a question from our audience. What is the role of the pancreas? The pancreas is a source of insulin in your body. And a very small portion of the pancreas, about 5% of the whole pancreas, is devoted to make insulin. And they come from a set of cells which we call the beta cells within the pancreas. So it's only a small portion of the pancreas. And they secrete insulin in response to your body's needs. How this works is you're hungry and you say you're going to eat. From the moment you look at your lunch, your body is starting to work. Your beta cells, in response to other hormones that are being secreted, just by noticing that it's time to eat, start to secrete a small amount of insulin, preparing your body for the food that you're about to eat. And when the food hits the gut, so you eat it, it's going down into your stomach and into your intestine, a greater stimulus for your body to produce more insulin. Thank you, Professor Boyne. The pancreas, like our other organs, has a specific and targeted role deep within our bodies. When cancer presents itself, sometimes one may not experience typical symptoms. That's why it's always recommended to do your regular checkups and talk with your doctor if you notice anything outside the ordinary. Pancreatic cancer it presents in very vague and non-specific ways. For example, not feeling well, weight loss, back pain. How many people have, have these things? And they are very non-specific. So by the time it really comes into the fray, the cancer is actually advanced. How, that, that, but that's just one of the reasons. The disease itself, the biology of pancreatic cancer, by nature, is a very aggressive type of cancer, I'm afraid. One of the issues that, that we see in the research arena is that um, because the organ is so 
difficult to access. It's very deep in the abdomen. It's hard to get biopsies, and and you can't learn a lot about the genetics of the tumor unless you have a biopsy. And sometimes the biopsies are very small, and that's in contrast to something like breast cancer, where you can remove a tumor and you have um, a lot of material to work with to do testing and to do research. In pancreatic cancer, we are way behind in, in analyzing tumor specimens and, and trying to learn from them. We are moving ahead with, with, with that work, so the understanding is improving, and I think that it will eventually will translate into better treatments and better outcomes. In the Caribbean region, because of our lifestyle, and I think because of environmental hazards, we are seeing an increase in pancreas cancer. However, um, you know, a lot of the new diagnostic tools that are being used now are able to detect can pancreas cancer whereby in the olden days, it, it was just justified as a stomach cancer. So basically, our foundation really started with the intent of raising a million US dollars for research because we realize that research is the key to better therapies. We are bringing hope to people by referring them to some of the world's best doctors in pancreas cancer. So, you know, our foundation basically, besides raising money for research, bring awareness, education, support to people and referrals to great doctors that can help them survive this cancer. We salute you, Natalie, and all other families who've had first-hand experience with this diagnosis and are helping to bring awareness to the forefront. There is strength in community. There is hope in the dark. We are united in this fight. Please visit the World Pancreatic Cancer Coalition.org to learn more about the efforts for early detection and research for a cure. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I can see clearly now the rain is At gone. Guardian Group, we've seen so many of our customers achieve great things. From key moments when together we've planned for the future to those unforgettable days when you've celebrated the rewards of those great decisions. So, it's no surprise that after 175 years, our optimism is stronger than ever. Because when you've partnered with people to achieve their best lives as long as we have, you tend to see the world a little brighter every day. Guardian Group. Live easy. Welcome back to Caribbean Medical TV. Today, we are chatting with the experts in the field that are each focusing on gaining greater insight into pancreatic cancer, early detection and support care. The best minds in the world are each working in tandem to better understand and ultimately shift the predictable path of this disease. Here's another question from our audience. What are some of the early signs of pancreatic cancer? We're getting a lot of knowledge as to the danger signals. So if someone comes in with abdominal pain and they're a smoker or have diabetes uh, or have had recent onset diabetes, we're very suspicious and then we'll get an MRI scan. But the risk factors for pancreas cancer, number one are smoking, number two are diabetes, number three is a family history. Even if grandpa had it and it skipped a generation, you still could have pancreas cancer. Familial pancreas cancer is responsible for about 16% of pancreas cancer. But the most important screening test, we don't have a great one yet, but if you have new onset diabetes, I would be concerned. Many people with pancreas cancer, if not most, notice that despite their weight going down, their blood sugar goes up. Normally in older adults, adults, your blood sugar will go up as your weight goes up. If you don't allow yourself to gain weight, the blood sugar is usually relatively well controlled. An early sign of pancreas cancer is the blood sugar moving in the opposite direction of the weight. Weight goes down, blood sugar goes up. It's important that the screening tests be able to help you detect disease. Fortunately right now, early detection is a challenge um, for this disease. Now, there are developing techniques where we know that cancer does 
shed its DNA into the bloodstream. So there's this concept of liquid biopsies, which means that we're taking blood and we're looking for evidence of cancer in the patient's bloodstream based upon altered DNA fragments. And that can be used not just for pancreas cancer, but for other cancers, right? It's just a general thing. And so that's, that is a technology that is being developed for screening tests um, for cancers in general. We have been able to, to find some people by doing very sophisticated genetic testing on the patients and on their, on their cancers and like the tumor biopsy, we do a lot of testing. So nowadays, if I see a new patient, I do a series of blood genetic tests, tumor genetic tests. Genetic sequencing allows us to now look and investigate diseases at the genetic level, which is the most basic level of a disease, the cellular level. If you think of disease, what causes disease on the whole? So let's think of heart disease, cancers, skin disease. It must be a change in someone's genes, in someone's DNA. Something had to change to lead to disease from the simplest disease to the most complex of diseases that's still a genetic change. So genetic sequencing allows us to investigate the genetic changes that would occur in an individual that can lead to that particular disease. We also have to note that certain diseases like breast cancer, colon cancers, and, and many other complex diseases have a hereditary genetic linkage to it. So if from birth to teenage years, to adulthood, whenever that time is there that that person screens for certain mutated genes that they can possibly possess that's been inherited through the family, then they know their risk. A tiny percent of pancreas cancer is tobacco related and that was most made famous by Patrick Swayze, the actor, who began smoking probably when he was 12 or 13 years old and was a heavy smoker for many years. Smoking and vaping have serious unseen risks. Dr. Eckhart Stewart of Jamaica advises that smoking and secondhand smoke is a multifold issue that affects your whole system. Sometimes it's not only what's within, but our personal choices, social and environmental factors that play a major role in our health. Smoking has multi-systemic effects. So not only have I damaged my lungs, limited my quality of life, need oxygen at home, but I also have the heart disease and the circulation problems which come as a result of smoking on the other organs. So it becomes a multi-systemic problem. There's a lot of discussion these days about our general health and how our general health results in the risk of developing cancer. So obesity, diabetes, how those could put you at risk of developing, say, pancreas cancer, for example. And what those things do is they cause this sort of inflammatory state where the cells are constantly being turned over, and that results in the situation where the cells are growing fast. They don't take the time to repair damage. That damage then gets propagated into the next generation of cells, and then ultimately you develop a cancer. Thank you, Dr. Akar Stewart and Dr. Weeks. And now for a question for Dr. Von Hoff. What about chemotherapy? Is that an option for patients? We think that some of the new chemotherapy regimens, this is for patients with stage four advanced disease, is now shrinking patients' tumors at a rate of around 86%. And if you can shrink the tumor, then patients' pain usually goes away in about seven days. If you get improved survival with that, and that's what we're seeing is improvement in survival, we think that the new breakthroughs behind that are gonna be there for those folks. We say, say you gotta stay alive to get the next breakthrough. And we're very encouraged. We should give every person with pancreas cancer a chance. With regard to treatment, uh, what I talked about was the efforts that we've been uh, involved in really over the past 25, 30 years, mm -hmm. uh, combining chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery in the most optimal fashion and figuring out a way to determine if the chemotherapy is the right chemotherapy for the patient. So my interest has been combining novel therapies, chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery in a way, in an order, if you will, that will optimize how long patients live and increase the number of patients who are cured. The message I would have is to don't, don't go away from your roots and your culture because, you know, when you, when you start eating 
fast food and you go away from the food in the market is when when you start running into trouble with diabetes and high blood pressure and cancer you know that that is there's no doubt that there's a link there right so people who don't walk and they, they decide to take a car or a taxi or something like that you know you that eventually it, it, it in the long run it, it has an impact you know so you you can make small changes and it's not just to prevent cancer you can help um, create sort of a healthier lifestyle and that can prevent not just cancer but many other lifestyle related diseases we thank all the doctors health and wellness professionals in today's program for their inspired efforts and dedication to shifting the tide only time will tell how we can positively shift the predictable path of pancreatic cancer for the time being we must take informed and proactive steps to protect and promote our own health and wellness in our daily lives. Stay with us and we'll be right back with more. Social investment has always been an integral part of the Republic Group's DNA. We firmly believe that we have a role to play in supporting and uniting many across boundaries of space and culture in the pursuit of building stronger, more sustainable societies. By forging alliances with NGOs and championing meaningful outreach initiatives, we continue to make an enduring, positive impact on the people and communities we serve. The Power to Make a Difference program is an extension of the bank's commitment to do good by doing better. Doing good by pledging our support to noble causes and doing better in the service of others. Welcome back to Caribbean Medical TV. Today in the program, we have an insider's look into the diverse perspectives of not just the medical sector, but its people, the fuel that drives these spirited and indomitable islands. Caribbean Medical TV wishes to highlight the incredible healthcare professionals throughout the region. Thank you for the care and dedication you show the citizens of these island territories on a daily basis. And now, back to the program. My husband was a larger than life personality. He was a great lover of sports. He loved cricket, he loved football. He loved his people of Trinidad and Tobago. He was, he was just the most noble, honest human being I ever met. And after John passed away, I was in awe. I was actually in awe of how great this man was. And I thought, I have to do something. Anybody that I have the opportunity to help and support, I actually treat them as though I'm treating my husband. It's the same thing. I think I'm still fighting for his life. And so really and truly, they become a part of me. I advocate for them with doctors and to make sure they're getting their right treatments on time. Our goal really is, if we could save a person's life in John's memory, then you know, we would have served him right. Because pancreas cancer happens to the nicest people. And, and, and it's just, it's just an unfortunate thing, but there is hope coming. There is a lot of hope on the horizon. We are looking for better treatments every single day, and we're trying to find new drugs that work much better. But if we can find ways that are inexpensive and safe to increase the therapies that we already have, then I think that we have a great thing to go on, and this is something that's gonna make an impact in patients' lives. Of course, we have to do it in a very stepwise way and do the proper clinical trials, and we're hopefully gonna begin those in the near future. We really need something like this here. People ought to be more aware of their health and things that are going on. This is a common thing because I have been a nurse for 50 something years in Trinidad and Tobago and I can tell you I have nurse cases, especially pancreatic cancer cases that have not survived. They have not survived after six months and it is not something that you could tell from before. It is very good that you really get a check, a very simple and the check is done here. And you can survive pancreatic cancer now, thank God, to the ripple operation. And this sort of thing, people really need to attend and listen and learn a lot. 
it is very, very informative. You know, I was aware of the predictable path of this disease and the, day, the prognosis normally is around six months from time of diagnosis, depending on the stage you're at. So in my case, I was really ready for that and that's what I had in mind. But thankfully, there are people out there who are doing research and they're putting energy and they're putting money and they're putting their, their hope into changing the outcome of this disease. So I was lucky enough to meet with this group of people and look at me now. I am now almost six years from initial diagnosis. I'm feeling very good. And most of all, I'm feeling hopeful and I'm feeling absolutely grateful for all this work that is being done in the background by these people. Thank you. I am very optimistic, even though it's been a real challenging journey so far and we have too many patients that are suffering. It's now going to be the second leading cause of cancer death in the United States in the next couple of years. But I'm very optimistic that in the next 10 to 15 years we're going to have major differences, not just in the way we treat pancreatic cancer, but also in ways to prevent it and also ways to detect it early. With pancreatic cancer, you don't even know you need help until it's too late. You know, it's this slow, silent cancer. I remember in our first um, oncologist's office and he said, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you feel? He said, fine, 9. If you told me to go and play football right now, I could play. I feel perfectly healthy. And he had stage 4 pancreatic cancer must metastasize in his liver. Each island is such a melting pot of cultures, traditions, people, you know, races, nationalities, all these different things that make us individual. But at the end of the day, when you get a diagnosis like this, you're just a person, you have cancer. I've actually been shocked, quite frankly, at how many people have come and found my mom and the foundation since she started it. You know, I feel like I didn't even know what pancreatic cancer was before my father got diagnosed. And now, at least once a month, she tells me about a new patient or a new person or somebody who came to her who got diagnosed or needs help or is looking for treatment or is looking to help someone. So I think that's really the goal, you know, just advocacy, awareness, health awareness, generally of your mind, of your body, just keeping on top of that. It is clear that we stand from similar viewpoints for issues reaching the forefront of the world's health concerns. Every trial, every study ultimately makes the difference in seeking future cures. Thank you to all our guests in today's program. As you have heard, for every diagnosis there is a healthcare professional hard at work. No one stands alone in this fight. You simply have to look around and there in every neighborhood in every village and city, there is someone holding the candle. I am Dr. Marim Abdu Richards, and you have been watching Caribbean Medical TV. See you on the next episode. Till then, keep moving forward. Keep hope alive.